Okay, we are now live. Well, it looks like we're here again for another RSA Monday. Um, I'm your host tonight, um, and tonight we'll be discussing virtual waves. My name is Brian Redman. I'm the Northeastern representative for the 2020 to 2021 year, and your incoming vice president for the Medical Student Council. I'm a, a G1 MD PhD at the University of Rochester. I'm joined by three other amazing and newly matched um, members of the Medical Student Council. I'll let them introduce themselves uh, so we can get started. We're also being joined um, by Leah. Uh, hey, Leah, how are you? I'm great. How are you guys doing? Sorry, I'm a little late. No, you're fine. You're right on time. We're just now getting started and we're doing introductions. So how about you get us started first? Okay, sounds good. So I, my name's Leah Colucci. I'm, I guess we're all fourth years, but I'm a fourth year at the University of Miami. Um, and I think that's the only cool thing I can really say about myself. I'm, I'm from Florida originally. So any questions about that? And I have a dual degree from an MD MS program. Awesome. Brianna? Hey everyone, I'm Brianna. I was born and raised in Northern California and I'm currently also a fourth year at Western University, which is down in Southern California. It's a DO program. So if you have any questions about that, I'm here for you. Um, other than that, yes, we matched today. Very exciting. And that's pretty much all I have. Let's throw it to Josh. <clears throat> um, I am a fourth year medical student in Alabama I'm at a DO school called ACOM. Um, I'm also in the Navy, and I matched into a Navy emergency medicine program in uh, Portsmouth, Virginia. Um, prior to med school, I was a ER flight nurse, and I'm happy to be here tonight with you. And to round us out, uh, Lauren. Hey, everybody. So great to be here tonight. Um, this topic tonight is about the virtual ways, and even though it was match day, we'll be covering match in a couple weeks, so look out for information on that, but tonight we're looking forward to talking to you about virtual ways. Um, I'm the Medical Student Council President. I'm from Southern California, but I'm out in Chicago uh, completing medical school. Great. So you, our panelists are here to answer your questions. We've got, you know, some pre-made questions already, so we'll cover the basics about um, virtual ways, uh, hit some things that were sent via email. But if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat. Uh, they'll be more than happy to answer them. Um, the first question, you know, it's pretty, pretty basic. Um, let's talk about what a virtual way actually is. And maybe um, the panelists can share with us some anecdotes from their virtual way experience, maybe about what some of the content was like. Anyone can start, just hop in. So I did one um, four week virtual way and one two week virtual way. So they were, and they were entirely different experiences. Um, the four week one had a lot of simulation set up and some like independent work that they would give me. So like EKG packets, things to read, um, some different uh, like podcasts to listen to in order to prepare for like these Zoom sessions that we had. Um, and so I think it's just kind of different based on how the program does it. Meanwhile, the two week program had a lot of like, they had me on a little iPad and wheeled me around their emergency department. Um, and they were different experiences, but I think both very valuable. So I think it also depends on what you're trying to get out of that experience when you're doing the virtual way. Yeah, I think that the virtual way that I experienced, I did one, one, two week uh, virtual rotation. And I felt like it was really just didactics for an extended period of time, plus a little bit of simulation. So most of the day, like most of the morning, it was lectures and they were a little bit more interactive than maybe a normal lecture because the lecturer at the end would ask you questions based on the lectures to make sure that you were paying attention. Um, mine was in East coast and I'm on the West coast. So it was like 5.00 AM every single morning. So I was a little sleepy, but it was mainly lectures. And then once every other day, we would do like a simulation where they would do a foundations type case and each time a different person would lead it, but other people could jump in and help answer the questions that they were asking. 
Mine was pretty similar to Brianna's. I also did a two week away. I did mine on the West Coast. So we were going opposite directions, um, but it was structured similarly. Foundations cases are lecture material that are used to teach residents in residency. So they um, kind of present a patient and then have you walk through the patient verbally, um, like all the different steps. And so um, there's, that's like really useful because it's the curriculum and residency. The thing that was different about my way was that it was also focused on social emergency medicine. So we had um, different fellows come talk to us about their experiences. And then we also did a lot of um, programming and conversation about how to treat patients well in the emergency department. So whether they were coming from jail, if they were um, patients who were trans, if they were patients who were homeless, things like that. And I think it really gave a perspective that we might not otherwise have had in medical school. So that was cool. Well, first of all, I really think that uh, sounds pretty cool, Lauren. Uh, the social side of uh, emergency medicine is something you encounter on every shift. So I think that's cool that you got that experience. Um, I did one official away, uh, which was at UAB in Birmingham, Alabama. And then the other one was kind of an informal <laughs> um, away uh, at a military program in San Diego. Um, they were both uh, a little different. The one in San Diego involved some of the, uh, you know, taking the camera into uh, the residents' uh, normal simulation practice, uh, which was good. I thought it gave us um, kind of a window into how the dynamics of the attending uh, residents uh, relationship were. And then um, in the one in Alabama was set up uh, as more of a didactics with uh, the board style, um, the oral board style review sessions that they were alluding to, the foundation stuff where they present a patient, you walk through it. I will say what I really liked about the virtual ways was that they were uh, excellent networking opportunities, I felt like, because, you know, when you go and do um, an in-person rotation, uh, it's very easy to get um, caught up in shift work and, you know, not always uh, easy to have those conversations that are meaningful. But um, on these, a lot of these Zoom calls and stuff, I mean, you're constantly interacting. Uh, they're seeing your little name on the the video feed. So you're getting uh, repeated exposure um, in, in a very good or, you know, if you're not a, a good, uh, a good person, probably a bad way, but <laughs> um, I, I really enjoyed the, the experiences, although it's always more fun to be hands on. So it seems like um, you all's experiences were, were, were pretty different, but meaningful nonetheless. Um, so there is a lot you can get away from, you know, virtual away. Uh, so I definitely would encourage, and hopefully that's not the future of away rotations, but definitely if that, you know, is the next step, I encourage all of our attendees to, to participate in them. Um, speaking of participation, um, there was a question, you know, that was, that was pro proposed to the panel about prerequisites for virtual ways. I think along that lines, you know, while you answer that question, I also want you to provide the, the attendees with uh, maybe some things they should consider, you know, things they should prepare for before um, attending a virtual way, or things you wish you would have known before attending a virtual way. So I don't think that I had any prerequisites for the virtual rotation that I did. I'm pretty sure I didn't. And I think that's just because the year that we were in, it was very you know, unprecedented as they like to say. And so they couldn't really require you to have an emergency medicine rotation already completed because that was kind of the whole thing is you, we were struggling to get those. So I don't think I had any prerequisites. Um, and then what was the second part of the question, Ryan? Maybe some things you wish you would have known before. Oh yeah, that's right. So I definitely think that the foundations, I did not know what those were prior to my virtual rotation. And it is a very systematic approach in the way that you ask questions for this oral board style. And so when I watched the first one, which was the first day of my virtual rotation, I was totally, I had no idea what I was kind of walking into. And there was a, another person who had obviously had experience and they started asking all the right questions that you're supposed to ask. So like, you know, I walk into the room, what do I see? And then you're, you go down this checklist of things that you ask. And so I think knowing that beforehand would have been really helpful. Obviously, when you get thrown into it, you eventually pick up on that. But 
kind of just knowing the structure beforehand would have been really nice because the person who did know what they were doing and had done it before really stood out, you know, as knowing uh, kind of what to do and how to go about that. Other than that, I felt like all the uh, talks and didactics that we had were kind of on a variety of subjects. So I don't know if there's any way that I could have prepared for the topics that they were going to talk about. My rotation was pretty similar in terms of like it, the only thing it had um, required was our ER rotation because it built off of the knowledge that we would have gotten from our ER rotation. So they were like, we assume they tested you on how to treat chest pain. So we're going to talk to you about a more uncommon cause of chest pain, things like that, where they just went a little deeper. And then we had to take a resident exam, which they didn't actually like grade, but it was like sort of it wasn't, I did, we didn't all do that well on it, but they were like, you did, you improved. So that's all we wanted to see. And I mean, it just shows you how much you're gonna learn in residency. Um, but I agree, like learning the foundations, not only being a prerequisite to the rotation itself, but knowing how to do that before residency, I think is super helpful because majority of the um, schools I interviewed use foundations in their didactics weekly. Um, and so, being a resident who already knows the format and kind of how to start doing that, I think is gonna be helpful. And that's something you could really gain out of virtual ways because the in-person ways don't often have time to have you do the foundations. If you see it at all, you're usually watching a resident do it. So I, the one rotation that I did that was the four week did re also require you to have done an ED rotation prior. Um, and that was because we had a final project that they asked you to um, present information on a patient that you had seen in your ED rotation. So we had to have seen like some sort of patients in an ED environment. Um, but the other one didn't require anything um, I do kind of wish, I agree with the idea of the foundations, like how the oral boards are set up because there was some oral board practice um, in, in the rotations, but I also wish I would have had, um, and I guess will be resources for you all next year, but I wish that I had um, had someone to ask like what the setup was like or what the expectations were like going into the rotation because I felt like um, at first I, I was the first person on one of the rotations so we were learning together and they did an amazing job of us providing each other feedback along the way but it would have been really nice just to be like what is my schedule going to be like today like that sort of deal. Um, so I, I think foundations is really helpful even for when you take your regular ED rotation anyway. So if you're looking for something just to play around with in some downtime, go ahead and start looking at those things anyway. Yeah, I would uh, echo uh, the sentiment of like, I don't, you know, doing the foundation stuff is helpful um, in terms of trying to uh, prepare like all of us neurotic medical students like to do um, there's really, you can never be, emergency medicine is a, is a very broad field. So you can't, you can't know everything and certainly not as a medical student coming in. So I think just focusing on, um, your interaction, you know, via zoom, some of these virtual platforms, if you struggle with that at all, you know, maybe using, um, if your school's doing any virtual, anything, uh, you know, approaching those sessions as your practice for a virtual way in terms of learning to speak up, you know, if you don't like to talk, it's a little different um, than an in-person rotation in that regard. So if you do an in-person rotation and you go to residency didactics, it's a little easier to just kind of slink into the back and not uh, draw attention to yourself uh, if you don't want to, um, because the residents are all there. But in the formats that I did for the away rotation, it was uh, all just medical students in the, in the chat, except for the resident meetup. So um, you know, you really, you were very visible. So uh, that's kind of what I was alluding to about it being a good networking opportunity is it's a great, it's a great chance to make yourself uh, known to them. Before we delve deeper into the, these intricacies, because we're, we're, I think we're about to start to pull apart, you know, the, the really intricate aspects of a virtual way. Um, there's questions in the chat about where we find virtual ways, what resources you utilize to apply. Um, and uh, this participant specifically asked about social EM virtual ways like the one Lauren described. 
Yeah, so I'll start with that one. So I found this away because I specifically looked at the schools that I was interested in attending. So I kind of spent time on the website and um, actually I found out about it through Instagram. So if you are on Instagram or Twitter, even now you can start following the residencies that you're interested in attending. I got tons of information about them through both of those platforms. Um, I think they used that more this last year because of we were virtual, um, but I feel like they will probably continue to use those to advertise themselves. And often they like put the perspective of residents on their platform, things like that. So it's a great um, resource. But if it's something that you're interested in specifically, I'm sure, um, probably Reddit might have like a list of different away, virtual away options, or even just like looking at your top, your programs that you're particularly interested in. I don't think it's a problem to say mine was at UCLA. So they might be offering it again in the future um, because it was a different experience that was particularly focused on social emergency medicine, so. So I know that some of these virtual ways are going to be like, you can look them up on VSAS. Um, they were offered on VSAS when I was going through and I found out about the virtual ways and I feel comfortable saying where I did mine too. So my four week one was at Yale and my two week one was at Georgetown. And I found out about them because I had applied to those programs for away rotations before they were canceled. Um, so they reached out to me when they were thinking about creating a virtual way to see if I would have still been interested because I had already shown interest in the program that I wanted to um, get involved and be there somehow. But I highly recommend, I think EM is a very social, like social media sort of specialty. So I got a Twitter this season just to actually look at residency programs. And I feel like I got a better understanding of how the programs work and interact with each other just through their social medias. So if you're not a social media person, it's okay. It's never too late to get one, but there's some really good info like Lauren said out there. I just applied for my virtual rotation on VSAS. I had a two week gap in my schedule and I realized that a virtual rotation would probably be the best option for me. But as another plug for social media, even not just virtual ways, but their socials or their, um, some of them have game nights or whatever. I definitely miss like the first half of that, like in the September, October timeframe, because I wasn't following them on Twitter or Instagram, but then like the later in the year, I, got, I was able to catch all those. So definitely start following programs you're interested in because they, most programs do post a lot on social media about the events they're going to have and about the virtual rotations. I was following UCLA um, at the time and I also saw the virtual way uh, that Lauren did. So, Yeah, uh, one of mine I just uh, kind of fell into because of the nature of the pandemic. It was supposed to be a, a in-person rotation then my orders got canceled. So that's uh, our, I think our finding of the virtual ways is definitely gonna, hopefully, if they go back to virtual, will be different for y'all. Um, the UAB one I did, I think they had just used their the people who had applied for the VSAS in person and then sent people out an email saying, you know, hey, we want you to come do a, a virtual rotation. So um, I agree with the, the social media thing. I think, um, you know, if there's one thing I've learned the worst that people can say is no. So if you're if you're looking for something, you know, it never hurts to send uh, emails inquiring or or pick up the phone and call somebody. I know it's you know we don't do that these days. We 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 only call if it's an emergency. But um, you never know who you who you're going to talk to and what doors that may open. So I would I would encourage just reaching out if you if you feel like you're interested in a program. That's really good advice. Thank you panelists for sharing. Um, we've been discussing pretty much the logistics of applying to a virtual way, to do a virtual way or not to do. Um, I've got a panelist right now who's really concerned about completing a virtual way at one of their top three programs. Um, the panelist writes that some advice uh, they receive about completing in-person virtual ways was not to do it if it's one of your top programs to sort of avoid making any mistakes, something that could potentially harm your application, even if it's accidental. Would you say the same advice is true for a virtual way? Should you avoid your top three programs of interest? I don't know that I would 
so I mean, I'm not a uh, you know an emergency medicine advisor, so I would take this with a grain of salt. Um, but I feel like there's really no better way to um, make an impression than to be there in person and for them to see you working on a shift with emergency medicine because it's so much of a teamwork environment and wanting to know who you are as a person. And uh, there's a, it's a diverse field. So I feel like there's room for everybody in emergency medicine. So there's no better way to, to display that than going there. The caveat to that would be if you have not done any emergency medicine, I wouldn't make your first rotation somewhere like your top program because you want to kind of work out your kinks a little bit um, before you do that. But, um, but yeah, in terms of whether that's how that compares to a virtual way, I would say um, since you're not showing up and doing shift work, uh, you, if your first thing is doing a virtual way with somebody, then, um, then that's probably okay as long as you're you know, uh, a good person and, and humble and, and not uh, the kind of person who would come off bad on Zoom. So. I agree with that too. I think, I mean, you guys hopefully will get the opportunity to do one in person away if possible. I think they're trying to work to do that um, this year. But I think if there's a program that you're super interested in that you weren't able to get in a way at, doing a virtual rotation isn't going to hurt you. Um, as long as you're positive, I mean, all of the things that that help make you a good third year are going to be the same in being a good virtual rotator that you're showing up on time that you're engaged that you're kind that you're not like talking bad about other programs things like that you know that are kind of common sense um but i think that they really were able to get to know us on the virtual away and i actually was able to get a letter from mine um and while i didn't get to read the letter i got to read my eval at the end and i feel like they really did get a good understanding of me as a person so i don't think you should shy away from it if it is a place you want to go and you want them to meet you so i also was this season was struggling so hard to find out more about the programs because i'm a very driven by like gut feeling fit feeling so um, I really loved the rotations because I got to interact with so many individuals at the program outside of interview day. So I got to really see um, how the residents interact with each other, um, how like residents that I felt like I really connected with and got along with. And I felt like I, you know, if I were to go to either one of these programs for residency, I have a much better understanding of how they work together and how um, like where my personality would fit in. So I think that was really helpful as well because interview day is such a small part and everyone's on during interview day. Uh, a lot of the experiences you have on interview day are curated. Meanwhile, with the rotation, like you see people at different points of their day all throughout the day. So you get more of an authentic this is how people interact with the attendings. This is how they interact with each other. And that made me feel a lot more confident um, about the types of programs and, and they're genuinely, both programs genuinely really cared about each other and I can only speak about them very highly, but um, I feel like if, you know, if they didn't have a good experience, I would have known that too. So I highly recommend it just for your own benefit of knowing more about the programs. And they typically do a lot of, programs that do aways even virtually typically offer um, their students an interview. So that could be a little boost in the door for you. Just going off what Leah said, I think, you know, it's, and this is just my personal opinion and my personal perspective. It's easy to think what your top three are until you potentially do an away rotation with, you know, one of those hospitals and you realize, wow, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe this isn't the place that I'm supposed to end up. And so in my mind, I would rather go in, do a virtual rotation or an actual rotation, whatever you can get your hands on and really get to know that place that you think is your top three. Because if it's gonna be in your top three, they're most likely gonna really love you and you're gonna love them. Um, but I also think that knowing yourself is important. And like Lauren was saying, you have to do all of those things. If you're gonna be on a rotation, be nice, show up on time and all those things that make you a good student and potential resident. But I think that I would not shy away from doing a rotation in my top three because I would want to know what those programs are truly about and being able to see them for more than just one day on Zoom. Hopefully it will be in person for you guys, but one day on Zoom doesn't really say much, but two weeks, four weeks, that says a lot more about a program, um, both in person and online. 
you heard it here first from your unofficial EM advisors. Um, our next question is, um, I think maybe a yes or no question um, associated with uh, maybe a question that has a longer answer, but um, some of the attendees wanna know, do you have to pay to complete a virtual away? Um, also, um, how many virtual aways can you complete for the same rotation? So I was thinking about this and I forgot that I paid, but I'm pretty sure I paid like $300 maybe, which in the grand scheme of having to travel and like live at a different place isn't terrible. Um, and I would spend it again every time because the rotation was so worth it, but it feels like a lot now that I'm remembering that. You just block out everything you pay during uh, interview season. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I think some of them might, I don't know if that's typical and I can't remember for sure if that was true, but I have this vague feeling that that's was true. Um, and then the second part of that was, what did you ask Brian? Sorry. How many rotate, um, virtual oh, ways? Yes, yes, yes. So my school allows you to do, I think four rotations within a specialty three on top of the like required rotation. So I could do three ER rotations and I used my virtual as one of my three. Um, so it all depends kind of on your own school's rules, I believe. So I paid for my virtual rotation, whatever the fee is on VSAS to apply for it. So if it's like 15, 20, $25, I can't exactly remember, but it's something along those lines. And then I also paid an additional I think it was like 25 or $30 because they mailed me a suturing kit and a couple of other things that we used for the rotation. Um, so that was kind of just paying for that, I guess. So all in all, I think it was like 50 or 60 bucks in total. Um, definitely worth it. Would do it again. And oh my gosh, I forgot the second part again. <laughs> Brian, I'm so sorry. How many can you do? <laughs> oh, how many can you do? So um my school only allowed us to do four weeks of virtual rotation. So with my two week virtual, I could have done two more weeks of virtual in any specialty. It didn't matter, but basically they put a limit on virtual rotations because people were doing a lot of them and just staying home. Um, so our limit was one month, four weeks. So I had to pay for uh, my Georgetown one and in and I think, I think it was a hundred dollars, but it was, and I'm just like, Lauren, I don't really remember what it was because it was worth it. And, and in their defense, they had gotten this whole, um, they paid for this technology. Like they got this whole like iPad on like a wheelie thing. I don't know what I was hooked up to, but they actually took me around the emergency department and had me like physically talking to patients. Um, so it was a, an amazing experience. And so I know there was a little bit of a cost that went into the, the technology portion of it. Um, so that's, I know that's what my money went towards. And again, it's saved so much money being home for those two weeks than it did having to fly or travel or anything like that. Um, and I have no idea of the limit at my university. I don't even know if they gave me credit for taking those. So <laughs> I can't tell you how many you're allowed to do. Yeah, my first thought at hearing $300 is all the uh, camping equipment that I could buy for that. Uh, <laughs> but as Lauren said, um, I do uh, I do agree. If it's, a, if it's a program you're interested in, honestly, I mean, that sounds like an expensive price tag, but it's hard to replace the value of uh, that interaction with them, um, especially if it's not available via another avenue, whether that's because of pandemic or financial uh, capability to, to go out to a place. But um, I think I was trying to remember, I don't, I think uh, the one with UAB was just um, the VSAS application fee. There may have been like some $50 administrative fee or something like that. But I also think that, you know, hearing the variety of uh, what these rotations were like, um, if this is something that continues on into this year, um, I'm excited to see what they come up with. Cause I know this past year, it was really kind of a scramble to provide something, you know? So I think the, the value and the quality of these rotations will probably, if they continue, will be uh, even better. It, it seems like, you know, there's a consensus among the panel that whatever the price is, you know, it's invaluable. You might as well pay it, you know, don't spend a thousand dollars on the virtual away. 
um, cause that might not be a virtual away. Um, just some advice. Um, our next question is um, just about how completing the virtual away translates into the next step. Of course, you wanna complete the away and get an interview. Um, so my question for the panel is first, did you receive an interview from the place you did the virtual away? And how did it come up in an interview and how did you speak on that experience to the folks that interviewed you? So I did get an interview offer from, so I did mine at Lehigh Valley, which is in Pennsylvania. And so I got an interview offer, but I actually ended up declining it because I could not see myself in Pennsylvania. So I didn't um, talk about it in my interview because I didn't do one, but I did get an interview offer. And I also um, could have gotten a letter from them as well. So like we were saying earlier, they do get to know you pretty well. And I think that the interview is pretty standard, so. My rotation actually included an interview. So they structured it kind of as um, a practice interview, but it was obviously like truly for um, the rotation cycle. And if you didn't want to like have it count as an official interview, you just didn't send your app there when it came time for apps because this was before the application process. But again, that was a big draw for me because this was one of my favorite schools. And like, I was interested, I want to go back home to California. Um, and so, they, um, it was a draw to get the interview. And what was kind of really cool about it was that we got feedback after. Um, and so it kind of drove my whole interview season because I got really specific feedback about particular answers um, that really improved my overall interview skills. So that was a really interesting um, aspect that I wasn't expecting. Um, and in other interviews at different schools, they all asked me about the virtual opportunities that I, and like what I learned and like, was it worth it and all that. And so I almost wonder if more places are gonna have virtual options because they heard from us who did them, how much we liked them and how much we learned from them. They like saw the letter that I got from it, things like that, you know, where I think it'll have an impact on next season. So I didn't do, uh, sorry, Lee, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, so I didn't do any civilian. Uh, if you're military, um, I may like throw my email into the chat or something if you need any um, advice. It's kind of a complicated thing, but um, I stacked all my civilian interviews to after the military match so that I wasn't doing unnecessary stuff, basically. Um, but the um, email, sorry, I was reading Brian's uh, text it. the uh, military virtual quote unquote rotation I did. Um, I did have an interview uh, towards the end of that. And I will say that I had spent so much time uh, talking with the uh, people in the program, residents and uh, faculty um, that during the interview, it just felt super relaxed and it was over Zoom as well. So it was a format I had already been interacting with them on. So that was a huge plus because it just felt kind of, there wasn't a lot of the same um, anxiety, I guess, uh, for an interview day. Um, it just felt like what I've been doing the past month with them anyways. So it's, it's a huge plus to be able to talk with them so much and for them to, for you to feel like they know who you are when you're sitting there to interview. So I would definitely encourage it for that aspect as well. And I will definitely make sure I put my email in there in a second. Both of the programs uh, offered interviews. And I think because, and same thing uh, as Josh just said about you felt more comfortable with them. And like, I felt like I was just, you know, logging into another day with them and having a nice conversation. They just might've dug into some other aspects of my personality that didn't come up naturally in the rotation. Um, but I will say, I think that one of the greatest things I got out of the rotation was the friendships I had made with the residents that basically became uh, mentors and offered me a lot of guidance throughout the interview season. So I kept in touch with quite a few of the people that I met at both programs and reached out to them throughout interview season um, about their program, about some other programs that they had disclosed me that they had interviewed at when they went through the process in the last years. And that really helped me, especially in this virtual season where I wasn't able to go to locations that I was interviewing at that I had never seen before in my life or like cities and things like that, get other perspectives. Um, so I think that if you have the opportunity to do a virtual way, whether or not an interview comes from it, you can be building really great relationships that a lot of other opportunities can come from. 
PM is a very, very small world. And I had the same thing where they like offered mentoring and stuff throughout the whole process. They, regardless of whether you wanted to go there or not. So it seems like the panel really enjoyed the, the away rotations and it, they were very beneficial too when building your network, your EM network and getting to know the interviewing body um, and ultimately securing you a match. It seems like, um, hopefully, oh, there's a hopefully there. Um, <laughs> um, I, I think what's next- I said hopefully, but I realized we all now know that we've, <laughs> we've matched. Okay. It feels like a dream, so. Yeah. We'll dream with you. Um, I'll join you in, in a short while, uh, a long while actually. Um, but I think right right now, you know, we talked about sort of the, the politics of applications and, and what to do and how to, you know, if we should do it. But we haven't really talked about, you know, what the rotation looks like and, and, and how to make the rotation meaningful. Um, so I think the next thing we need to get to is, is how do I make the most impact? during my virtual way. Uh, what do I need to do? What should I be prepared for? How do I shine? So I think uh, that's along the lines of uh, what I think I've brought up in every single response that I've had on this uh, chat in some way or another is the networking aspect of it. You know, um, uh, like they were saying, uh, EM is a small community, and I think this is also a good point to make at this juncture is that regardless of where you're doing a rotation, virtual, in-person, et cetera, um, you know, be on your A-game that whole time because everybody knows everybody, it seems like, in emergency medicine. And these program directors, they all go to conferences with each other, et cetera. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind, you know. Um, but I, in terms of like how you can shine, I really think that, um, you know, there's a lot of people, and I've said this before, I think in another panel, but there's a lot of people who um, approach an emergency medicine rotation and think like, you know, I got to go in there and I got to be cracking chests and like <laughs> doing all this crazy stuff and uh, riding to work on my longboard and leaving to go rock climbing after work and all that kind of stuff the stereotypes of emergency medicine. And like I said before, there is room and need for all different types of people in emergency medicine and whatever you have as a person to bring to the table is valuable, you know? And so I think knowing yourself um, and, and letting that out in the way that you interact with people in this format, being humble, being inquisitive, you know, uh, the big things that residencies are looking for um, and, you know, something that has been noted on uh, my evals is that, uh, you know, I'm somebody who had a lot of, and I worried about this going into my rotations, I had a lot of uh, emergency experience before med school. I was an ER and flight nurse, so I did not want to come off as the, that guy, you know, the guy who thinks he knows everything, etc. So all that to say, it's so important to be humble and teachable. You know, they want to know can we teach this person? Do they improve? Can we trust them? You know, and so any way that you can make that come across, you know, through these interactions, asking questions, taking that knowledge, and then uh, showing that you've integrated it into your thought process. Those are all really important things to do. And then just, you know, being a good person and, uh, and presentable, you know, don't show up to <laughs> A, uh, a, a virtual Zoom meeting and like your pajamas. And I mean, there's probably a program director out there that would like that, but uh, most, most are, are, are not, you know? So I think uh, presenting yourself professionally in the way that you look and, and act um, is, is really key. I would second that, uh, just showing up being presentable, you know, even though you're on a virtual screen, maybe you can wear your sweatpants on the bottom, but like look presentable on top uh, as you would for, you know, if you're going to a lecture or something like that. It doesn't have to be like suit and tie, but like, you know, have a nice dress shirt or something like that on. 
And I think uh, the way that mine was structured, like I had mentioned, it was lectures and then there was questions at the end. So paying attention, answering the questions at the end, um, we would like type into the chat or whatever, or if it was a longer answer, you could speak. And then for the foundations part, I think that that's really the time to show, even if you are the one that is answering the questions, that you're a team player, right? You're going to, you're going to ask your teammates for help. You're going to ask your teammates for what do they think it is? You know, I may not know the answer to this kind of going back to being humble. Like I would there, I can't tell you how many times during the foundations I said, I have no idea what's next. Can someone help me? And then, you know, they would help me. And so I think just showing that again, teachable, humble, being a team player, is so important. And all of those things do come across on Zoom. You may not think that they would during a virtual rotation, but they really do just in the way that you act, the way that you potentially use the chat. If you're paying attention, if you look presentable, you know, like I said, I was up at 5 a.m., but like I looked presentable every single day, whether I wanted to or not. So I think that all of those things that Josh mentioned are really important. I just want to echo what Brianna said, because EM is so inherently based on teamwork. Um, the way the department runs is based on a team coming together to take care of a patient. And so I think these virtual rotations are a great way to show that you are a team player. Foundations cases, my rotation did sim, and we would like piggyback off of each other. We even did an escape room where it was like we really had to work together. Um, things like that, you know, that that you can showcase how you you're not like domineering and you're gonna you're willing to listen to other opinions and you can redirect the group in a humble way if needed you know things like that really can come across um and then another thing i would say would just be prepared so like my rotation had curriculum for each day um we had like some podcasts some articles things like that and like something that's easy to do is just actually read them actually listen to them you know and i i know it's easy to fake and we've all done that in certain rotations but this is the time to like learn the content and show that you did it you know that's really easy to to answer if the article told you the dosing of some medication and then your attending asks you and you can just know it off the top of your head that is going to come through and they're going to see that you took the effort to learn that I think too, we don't give Zoom enough credit for showing how engaged we are or not. There's some little um, things that I saw on forums where people mentioned, like if you wear glasses, they can see the reflection of you on diff like on different websites when your lighting drastically changes, like it could be you minimizing Zoom. So it's there's some ways to, if you just go and are paying attention and are staying engaged, like all of the things they mentioned, like those are obvious. Um, and then in the rotation that gave me um, prep work that we submitted, you know, submitting that on time, if I had any struggles with it, actually messaging the people that they gave me as resources to ask questions or to ask them what they studied and, and how they did things showed that one, I was doing the work that they provided, but two, I was trying to take it a step further and learn more things. You also don't want to be annoying and, you know, come up with random questions just to ask a question sometimes, but you do want to show that you're taking the rotation just as seriously as you would take an in-person rotation. I want to harp on one thing that Brianna said, um, the chat feature. I saw this on some of my virtual stuff where I, there's like a disconnect between the video talking and the chat feature, some people think, you know, the chat is just like loosey goosey. You can put whatever in there, I guess. So I saw some things, some pretty cringy things that people would put in there trying to be funny, et cetera, that, you know, I don't think, <laughs> yeah, Brian. <read. laughs> so, uh, you know, Brian is not an offender like this, but uh, yeah. So I would just, you know, be careful, be careful with that. <laughs> It's, it's the PhD life, it's too laid back. Um, it ruined me. Uh, I, I definitely wanna leave uh, some time at the end if folks have any questions, um, especially from our participants. You know, you can keep dropping those in the chat, um, but I kinda wanna just round out this panel with this one final question and then, you know, we'll turn to the chat, you know, and our, and our attendees for more. But how do I seal the deal on my virtual way? You know, when it's closing out, you know, the last couple of days, is there anything I should do? Is there something I should do at the end? Is there a contact I should make? How do I put the stamp on my virtual away performance? Uh, 
Um, oh, go ahead, Brianna. You look like you were going to say something better. I don't know if it's better, but I think that what I did at the end of my virtual rotation, now I don't know if this made a difference or, you know, not. Because I, I again, I think that your whole performance throughout the entire time is really important. But at the end, so their clerkship director and um, their associate program director were the two main people in charge of the virtual rotation, along with two of their chief residents. And so what I did is I just sent them an, e an email, like a very heartfelt email, thanking them for the time and hard work that they put into this because it's not easy to make a virtual rotation curriculum. Um, it's not easy to put the sim together, to put the foundations together. Like it takes time and coordination of, you know, all the residents and, you know, the program director gave a talk and kind of just organizing all these different people. So I just sent a nice email and I thank them for putting it together for us. This is a really rough year, you know, and, and I was thankful to be able to have this learning experience. And so that was what I did. That was just something that I felt I wanted to do because again, you know, it was a rough year and having that option was really great. Um, I don't know if that sealed the deal or anything, but I definitely, if I was in your position and doing a virtual away, I would 100% do that time and time again. I think uh, one, definitely echo Brianna. And then another thing, um, a piece of advice that you probably have already gotten. And if not, we're giving it to you here tonight um, for in-person rotations is to, uh, treat everybody you work with the same uh, because you have no idea how the dynamics of that particular residency are and who uh, somebody may have a title of authority but you really never know like which uh, there may be there may be a nurse there that has some sway in talking to the program director etc so I would extend that to virtual rotation so it, regardless of who's giving you a lecture, talking to you, interacting with you in a sim situation, et cetera, um, you know, you should just, uh, as you should in life, just treat everyone with uh, that, that respect and, and, and all that. Um, and then I agree with Brianna. I think, you know, um, sending a sincere, like, you know, thank you for this opportunity, um, you know, allowing us to interact, you know, maybe if there was something you definitely if this is like your top program and there's some things that you really love about it and that's why you want to go there you know iterate that in that thank you email um especially if it's anything unique you know um, i think a general piece of advice is, is if you have some unique circumstance or a uh, unique aspect of your personal history or whatever that uh you think makes you a good fit for a program uh throw those things out there you know throw them throw them out there multiple times because these programs are looking through thousands of applicants. So if you have any uh, identifying anything, it always helps. I'm just gonna jump in real quick because I wanna touch on what Josh just said about treating everyone the same and you know, not like thinking, not if there's a nurse or a tech or something like not just dismissing them or being rude to them. And I will just say that uh, during my actual away rotation, I was like, kind of just hanging out, hanging around because on this one day we didn't have patients. We were just in the trauma section doing procedures. And so I was kind of just wandering about like not really doing anything. So there was someone cleaning a room. I think it was a nurse cleaning a room. And I, and so I just went in and helped her like pull the sheet over the bed, literally took me five seconds. And it was in my letter of recommendation that I like took the time out of my day to help them. And it, apparently it was the charge nurse that day. I come to find out, but anyways, just like little things like that it ended up in my letter and like, how could I have ever known that that would happen? But just again, like be humble and yeah, treat everyone the same, everyone with respect as you should do in life. I think people sleep on the coordinators a lot where they don't realize how important program coordinators are and how full of information they are about the program. So I had a few opportunities um, leading up to the virtual ways just to ask some questions to the program coordinators about like, you know, things about the actual program, things about how the virtual um, rotation was going to go. And they were, oh, <laughs> let's help wake up. Um, things that, they were just a wealth of information both before and after um, the the virtual rotation and i think that even in your home programs um, the coordinators really are they've been through these interview seasons on more than one occasion they've now had to hook it up for the virtual ways and the um, virtual interview season so they know what they're doing 
don't be afraid to ask them for help, especially if you're being like, we're repeating just very, very kind to everyone because EM is a team specialty team sport. Everyone who's going into EM hopefully is going into it because they really want to change the face of medicine and treat every patient um, well. So that should translate to treating all of your, the nurses, techs, residents that you're working with everyone well, because EM is a team sport. I agree with what everyone said. And I, I had like a final feedback session at the end with our coordinator, um, which is really great. And I feel like we, it was this kind of like an in-person version of what I would have said in an email, you know, and I can't remember if I emailed or not because it's just been so long, but I think I might have, I'm not sure. I think that's always a great thing to do and being thankful um, for the opportunities that you're provided is amazing. And again, echoing what everyone said about always being kind and everyone is knowledgeable about the program. So whoever you're talking to, like I met a bunch of fellows who taught me a lot about what a fellowship is and different opportunities for me, which gave me things to talk about in my interview. You know, you can always gain information about emergency medicine with whoever you're with. So use every opportunity. There's a consensus amongst our panelists. You can hit it out of the park if you're a good person. So be good on your virtual way. I hope you gained a wealth of information from uh, us tonight. Um, if you have any more questions, we've got nine minutes left. Um, drop them in the chat. You know, we want to get those questions answered. Otherwise, um, you know, you can reach out to our panelists. Don't reach out to me. I didn't do a virtual way. Um, you know, but if there's something I can assist you with, feel free to contact me. Um, but yeah, reach out to our panelists. They can get those questions answered. Um, shoot us an email. Um, Lauren will answer the email. Um, but thank you for attending tonight's RSA Monday uh, virtual away panel. Tune back in in two Mondays to hear about the match process. Lauren already dropped the deets in the chat. Um, make sure you tune in, you know, bi-weekly on these Mondays to get this good info. It's out here. You need to get it. Again, thank you for attending. Have a good night. And thanks to our awesome host, Brian. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody.